Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Welcome to another tutorial series where we are going to be building something actually quite special and this tutorial series might be a bit longer than you are used to on this channel. We're going to be building um, an application, a Spring application with Angular for frontend. So in this tutorial series, we are going to actually add a frontend to our application. What we are going to be building may change over time, but my general idea here now at the beginning is to build some kind of, uh, let's call it a taxi service application. So let's say that we have a company. So we have a taxi company with a couple of vehicles and some workers and we are taking fares. So we're going to give rides to people and stuff like that. And we want to track all of that data. We want to track all of the information about the vehicles that we have, where do they drive, how often do they drive and all of that nice things. So somewhere later, we are going to be adding uh, even a map, which is going to be super fun. And we are going to have like things where we can create entities, update them, delete them, uh, modify them and stuff like that. We are going to be also including some searches. So maybe we even introduce uh, Elasticsearch into this project. We'll see how it uh, goes and where it takes us. But for now, we're going to start simple. We're going to start with creating our um, root of our project. So in this tutorial, I already, so in this video, I already have it set. I've prepared everything, but I'll go into uh, guide you through it just to show you what I have and how you can get at that part. As always, all of the code is on GitHub, so you can just check it out out of there if you don't want to type it together with me. Um, I would suggest that you just follow through to the video and um, yeah, then once we are done, then you can try it on your own and always look at GitHub to compare at what, what went wrong, what went better than I did and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, let's just start. As always, we are starting at the Spring Initializer page where we are creating our uh, application. So I am choosing the language Java, it's a Gradle project and I filled out some things here. You don't have to match this, so it's just for my convenience. And the dependencies are the things that are important. So we have Spring Web, we have the REST repositories and we have the Spring Data G JPA. Uh, if you miss some of these dependencies, you can always add them later, so it's not really a problem. So just add them here, generate the project and import it into IntelliJ. Once you import your project in IntelliJ, it will not really look uh, like this. It will be similar, but you won't have this modules folder. So this directory won't be there. And some of the things might look a bit different. Like you would have sources folder here uh, where your uh, main and test um, directories are. First thing you want to do is delete that folder. So we want to get rid of it. We're going to have the, our structure built a bit differently. As you can see, the modules directory is a, a module, a Gradle module, where we are going to be storing all of our modules that our application will have. For example, at the beginning, we're going to have backend and frontend. So backend will be one module and frontend will be another module. So what you want to do now is go here, new, don't go to module, but go rather to directory. Just create a new folder, call it modules, that's not really important, but just call it modules. And inside of the modules, create this build.cradle file. So again, modules, new file, and then create the build.cradle, and it's empty. So just leave it empty, don't worry about it. This is just so that the Gradle can recognize that this is a module. Okay, great. With that being done, what you want to do is repeat that again, create two folders, name it backend and frontend. So uh, right click on modules, new directory, and create backend and frontend. And inside of both of them, create build.cradle files. Again, empty. Don't touch them, don't change them, that's it. Once you have done that, we move on to the settings cradle. Inside of the settings cradle is where we are going to include uh, those modules that we created. So basically you want to add this line, which says, yeah, please include these two modules the backend module and the frontend module, and they are relate, they are contained inside of this modules folder or inside of the modules module. I'm saying modules <laughs> too, too much. Okay, so with that being done, uh, you are ready to go. You want to go to your uh, backend folder. So inside of the backend folder, 
more inside of the backend module, we want to create this structure. You may actually notice this is the same thing that we just deleted previously. So we have this sources folder and we have the main and test. You can create this. Um, I think IntelliJ even offers you that. So if you go to the directory and then uh, here, for example, it offers a source test resource, you can do the same for this one. So you can, uh, it will offer you this if you uh, just try to type it out. If it doesn't work for you, just create uh, directories. It's a source, then it's inside of there is a main and there is a Java and there is a resources folder. And yeah, there is then test and Java. And of course, uh, if it doesn't work for you that they are marked like this, you can uh, go right click and then you can go mark directory as. And then uh, since I don't have it, uh, it will be set like something like uh, mark as sources root. So like uh, something like this. And then you will have this uh, nice uh, icons in IntelliJ. So it will be looking pretty for you. Great. With that being done, uh, we go to our uh, Java directory and we create a package. We name this package, um, you can name it basically however you want. Uh, I have this name for it. And inside of that package, I create a application class. The application class is really empty. So it's uh, just this. Uh, it's a normal Spring Boot application. So just uh, create this once you have it and you're ready to go. The next thing that we want to do is before we actually um, set up our modules so that you have here reload all Gradle projects, we don't want to do that yet. We want to go back. So outside of our modules directory, there is a build Gradle, so like our main build Gradle. Um, we want to go there and we want to um, change it. It, you already have it and it may not look like this. For example, you will have this part, you will have uh, this part, maybe even this, I'm not 100% sure, but you won't have these two. So what you want to do is you want to add this, uh, make sure that this name uh, matches the package that you're creating. So it's Comlilium for me and source compatibility uh, is 15 for me because I'm using Java 15. So whatever version you're using, just set it here. And we are going to be applying this to all of our projects that we have. So like all of the modules that we have, and this will be applied to the sub project. So we want to apply some dependency management from Spring, uh, some IDE plugin, which is just for IntelliJ, and of course, the, uh, the Java plugin. And with that being done, we have to go to our modules, backend, build Gradle. And here we have Java plugin applied and we have our Spring Boot. And here we also we add the dependencies that we created. So at the beginning, um, in this uh, main build Gradle, so like this root build Gradle, you will have the dependencies, you can just copy them from there, remove them and put them here. So this is, uh, for example, I here have the data rest and the web, uh, I don't have the JPA, but you can add it uh, later. So it's not really a problem. And with that being set, we can actually reload our uh, Gradle project. So just click this button and everything should be set up for you. You should have these nice um, icons. So IntelliJ should recognize that these are the modules. If it doesn't work at the beginning, you can just try to remove everything from the backend folder, except uh, the build Gradle uh, file. So remove the structure that you created and then reload them and then try to create it again. But of course, as I said, this code is available on GitHub, so you can just check it out out of there. If you don't want to type, type it out, so you can just check out this uh, commit and then just start from this point, basically with the, whatever I have now, and then you can just add on your own the rest of it. So uh, with that being done, now we want to uh, create some things in our backend. We want to go to our main and we want to uh, add some configuration. So in the application configuration, uh, we want to add some course mapping so that since we are not um, and basically since we are uh, accessing our application from a different endpoints, uh, so from a different uh, origin, in our case, it will be uh, 4200. So that's the port on which the front end will run. We have to say to our application that that's allowed and that that origin is fine. So we need this configuration class, which implements this web MVC configurer. Um, and uh, you need to add this so that whatever the path is and whatever the method is, if it's from this origin, it's allowed. So that's the one thing that you need to handle. I put it in the configuration folder so you can also do that. The next thing you want to create a DTO package. And inside of DTO, we create a small uh, Java class called Hello World DTO, which has just one property, a string message. 
And with that being done, we also want to create a controller. Let's create our hello world controller, which is um, under request mapping it's slash API. And we annotate it at re as rest controller so the spring knows what it is. And we have a one um, get mapping, which means this endpoint can be accessed with a, a get HTTP request. And it just returns this video that we previously created and it has a some message for us. And basically that's it. So with this, our um, backend is done and we don't have to worry about it anymore. We can basically close this. Now the next thing is what we want to do is handle the front end. For front end, we are going to be using the Angular CLI. And before we can use it, we need to install it. And also to install that, we need to have the Node.js installed. I will be providing the links in the description, so you need to install uh, Node.js. And with the Node.js, we can use the Node Package Manager to install the Angular CLI. So basically, you should just open your command prompt um, anywhere and just run this command and it will install the Angular CLI globally. Now, the next thing what you want to do is you want to go to IntelliJ, you want to right click here, and then you want to go to uh, show in Explorer, if I can find it somewhere. Come on, where it is. This is kind of uh, embarrassing. Um, why can't I see it? So usually you can open it directly. Ah, open in Explorer. So it's here. So if you click here, it will run here. And then you can just try type here CMD and it will open a command prompt window directly at this folder where you are. And with that opened, what you want to do is run ng new and then the name of the folder. Uh, which in our case is frontend. So you would type something like ng new frontend. Hit enter, let it run. So it will take some time. And once it's done, it will create all of these nice things for you. So as you can see, uh, everything will be created. And um, this node, for, node modules might be missing, but um, we can. Uh, it will be created once you execute the serve command. One thing that I want to mention is that I will not be using IntelliJ to handle the front-end part as um, the version of IntelliJ that I have, which is this community edition, doesn't really handle all of the, so you don't have the typings and stuff like that. So autocomplete is not there and so it's not really nice. I'm using uh, Visual Studio Code for that. And it's uh, free to download, so you can, uh, I'll be also providing a link for it. So you can just download it from this page, install it, it's actually quite nice and you can use it to run the to handle the front end so we are going to be using two applications so IntelliJ for back end and visual studio code for front end okay so once the command prompt um, has been finished you what you want to do is uh, you want to go to so uh, here file uh, open folder and then find the folder where you, the front end is located and just open the front end folder and inside of it uh, you will have a similar structure to this, but you will not be having this file. So proxy.conf.json, you want to create this file. This is uh, something that says basically if you are trying to access something on the front end port, which is 4200, and it ends with slash API, um, please just change the target to this. So basically you want to say, uh, yeah, I'm not running the, these API endpoints on the front end, I'm running them on the back end, so just go here. So it's just a proxy uh, and this is the configuration for it. And once you have done that, you want to go to the package JSON and find this line. Uh, for me, it's on line six. There's the st uh, start command. Uh, no, I didn't want to run it and uh, this so i think you would only have that would only have the ng serve but now you want to also uh, add the proxy configuration that we just created which means that if you run ng serve uh, you should be able to uh, uh, you should be able to use this proxy configuration and it looks like uh, i tried to execute something which i didn't want so just uh, ignore that okay great uh, and beside that, I think we don't have to change anything. Uh, in the app component HTML, I just deleted everything that was um, there by default and just left this because this is what we are interested in. 
and everything else stayed the same as we have it. So I will be explaining some of these things uh, later on, but the app component is the one where we do the change. What we want to do in the app component, we want to add a constructor and we want to in, uh, inject a HTTP client so that we can make an HTTP request to this and we want to verify that it actually works. And we can actually add a console log here, console.log, and we are going to log this.title. So what we are doing here, we are saying uh, HTTP get slash API slash hello, and then we subscribe uh, to the response and then just put it here. We know that it's a response dot message because the response is, if we go back to IntelliJ, to backend, source, main, Java, DTO, hello world. So this is our response. And if I middle mouse click it, you can see that in the, um, nope, here, uh, that we have it. This is the response where we are returning this DTO and the DTO has one property message. If I had multiple properties, I could also access those. And one thing that you notice is that we are not specifying the target here. So there is no server URL or anything. That's because of this proxy configuration that we created previously. So we are targeting the uh, localhost 8080 slash API. So it will uh, know what we want to do. And we'll just go to this and that's it. Okay, great. Now. With that being done, all we have to do is just try it out. So let's go to frontend and again, CMD. So I'm opening the command prompt at the frontend folder and I want to start it. To start it, I'm using the node package manager. So npm start. What this does, as you can see, it will execute the ng serve command with the proxy configuration. So in the package JSON, uh, you can see this command. So you can also have uh, different ones. You can run the tests, lint, end-to-end, -end, and stuff like that. So that's something. And here you can see that it started. For you, it may take uh, maybe a bit longer because for very first time when you execute it because it needs to create, uh, so don't download all of the dependencies and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, that's it. And for now, you can see that uh, our front end is running, but we don't have access to to uh, to backend. So if I would try to do something here, um, we can, if we open the developers consoles with F12, uh, let's reload the page. You can see that uh, this request fails because it's trying to access it and we don't have our backend running. So that fails. So we can also see it here that we just can't access this. So what we need to do is like with any other Spring application, we just start it. So we can go to the uh, we can go to the application class and just uh, click this play button here and it will start up and it will run on port 8080 by default. You can of course change this, but then you have to make sure that you also change the proxy configuration for it. Okay, uh, let's now try to access our backend directly. And as you can see, it works. We can get the API hello endpoint with the hello spring with the Angular message. And if we go to front end, nothing happens but in our developer console you can see that the hello um, request and so in the network tab has been executed and this is the response we got the uh, uh, json with a property message hello spring with angular and we also are doing a console log so you can also see it here and you can see that where it was logged app component ts line 13. perfect so we can as you can see all of the things that we wanted to do work and we are ready to uh, expand our application. So in one of the next videos, we're going to be expanding our uh, backend. So we're going to be introducing this JPA repositories so that we can um, create our um, first entities. We're going to create bases for those entities and all of that nice stuff. So the structure of the application will be, um, let's say, professional or something like that, because that's what I'm used to. Yeah, I'm going to end this video here. If you have any questions or if something is unclear, please do let me know. And if something doesn't work, also just leave me a comment and I will try to explain it um, as soon as possible. And I will probably see you in the next one.